There are many perspectives on Yamaha striking new retro XSR 900GP. For some, it harkens back to the 1980s and 1990s when Yamaha's Marlboro liveried YZR 500V4 dominated the Grand Prix racing scene. Whether it evokes this era for you depends on your age, how long you've been passionate about motorcycles, and your interest in racing history. For those who lived through the 80s and followed sport bikes closely, the XSR 900 GP is inseparable from the achievements of Eddie Lawson and Wayne Rainey. On their iconic red and white YZRs, these legends clinched multiple world championships, marking one of the greatest periods in US racing history. This bike will undoubtedly trigger a deep sense of nostalgia for them. Younger enthusiasts might not feel the same level of nostalgia, but the bike's design will still stir their souls. For me, at 48, the XSR 900 GP brings back memories of my teenage years filled with FZs, FZRs, and TZRs, fast, agile Yamahas featuring the signature flat-top gas tank and YZR 500, inspired styling. Regardless of your perspective, the XSR 900 GP's retro styling is likely to attract many buyers based on looks alone. However, it's important to note that this bike is more than just a nostalgic design. Yamaha has combined the excellence of the XSR 900 Sports Heritage triple with advanced technology from the MT-09 and MT-09SP Sport Nakeds. The result is a motorcycle that promises to deliver something truly special. So, does it live up to the hype? Is the XSR 900 GP merely a superficial styling exercise, or is it a powerful blend of past and present? For context, my old FZ600 had a choke, while the new XSR 900 GP boasts Bluetooth, something only reminiscent of eating a blue ice lolly back in the 90s. The anticipation was palpable as we headed to Portugal to test the XSR 900 GP on the road and then take it for a spin around the historic Estoril GP track on the Iberian West Coast. Retro styling, modern underpinnings. We typically kick off a new model road test by discussing engine performance or a new chassis setup, but with the XSR 900 GP, we must start with its looks and nostalgic appeal. Some may argue that it's just a dressed-up XSR 900, but Yamaha has thoughtfully added touches to enhance its retro charm. The top fairing, for example, is secured with classic fairing stays and racy R-clips and features the distinctive handguards reminiscent of the legendary YZR. The digital dash has an analog theme, the drilled fork caps are spot-on for the 80s, and from its flat tank with sculpted knee pockets to the boxy rear single-seat cover, the overall look convincingly channels the YZR500. Unlike the old Grand Prix racer, however, the single seat is removable, and it includes neat fold-down pillion pegs like those on the XSR900. The Delta Box style frame boasts an authentic period finish, and even the alloy, spin-forged wheels have hubs with holes reminiscent of those on my Yamaha FCR 1000 EXUB. While I would have preferred twin round headlights over the standard single compact light, others will appreciate the clean, uncluttered yellow nose that mimics the yellow number boards of 500 cubic centimeters Grand Prix bikes. Some might miss a traditional exhaust and end can, though a factory option is available, but the Marlboro branding is impeccably on point. Without any actual Marlboro lettering, the design harkens back to the early 1990s when some countries banned explicit cigarette advertising at Grand Prix events. The XSR 900 GP's retro aesthetic is so convincing that I felt out of place in modern airbag race leathers and wished I had worn my old jacket, jeans, and a 1992 Iron Maiden t-shirt instead. When you first hop onto the GP, it's a bit disorienting. Nostalgia hits as memories of Rainey, Lawson, and John Kaczynski flood back. But then you're met with a thoroughly modern 5-inch dash and advanced switchgear, including standard cruise control. This equipment isn't just lifted from the base XSR. It's all new for the GP. There's even a nifty 5-way joystick and a unique seesaw indicator switch. The bike now offers three standard riding modes, Sport, Street, and Rain, plus two customizable maps. Within these modes, the XSR 900 GP features four power modes, PWR, three levels of traction control, TCS 1-3, Yamaha slide control system, SCS, with three settings, wheelie control, LIF, with three levels, cornering ABS, which can be turned off, Yamaha's adjustable quick shifter system, QSS, with two settings and off, 
and the new brake slip regulator, BSR, which is always on. All these systems are linked to a six-axis IMU, making everything lean-sensitive. Although this might seem complicated, it's surprisingly intuitive. I typically chose either sport or street mode and disable the LIF, wheelie control, for obvious reasons, and because Eddie and Wayne never had those features. Interestingly, when you disable wheelie control, it remains off in all riding modes, including rain, and stays off even after restarting the bike. Riding Impressions As we left Yamaha's HQ Hotel and headed along the scenic coastal route in Portugal, it was clear that the GP model is more radical than the standard XSR900. Your body weight is positioned much further forward, thanks to clip-on style bars that are 93mm, 3.7 inches, forward and 114mm, 4.5 inches, lower. The seat is also 12mm, 0.5 inch, forward and 27mm, 1.1 inches, higher, with the pegs raised by 26mm, 1 inch, and set back by the same amount. This results in a sportier stance compared to the base XSR but remains balanced and suitable for everyday riding. Yamaha notes that the bars, mounted above the yokes, are higher and less aggressive than the R7, and nowhere near as racy as the R6 or FCR 400 RRSP. However, as a shorter rider, I did notice the taller seat height compared to the standard XSR. For those initial miles at low and legal speeds, the softer and smoother throttle response of street mode was preferable over the more aggressive sport mode. Yamaha has a tendency to make the sport throttle response a bit too harsh, and even on the racetrack later, street mode proved to be the better choice. As we approached Eshteril, there were moments when we could let the engine roar. The third-generation QSS Quickshifter is impressively smooth and crisp, allowing seamless gear changes as the triple accelerates. The 5 Euro Plus compliant, 890 cubic centimeters CP3 inline triple engine delivers a claimed 68.6 lbft of torque at 7,000 rpm and 117 horsepower at 10,000 rpm, striking a perfect balance for this type of bike. Riding its torque curve through the mid-range, the GP Retro provides instant response and drive. It feels urgent, strong, and fast. Alternatively, you can tuck behind the sporty screen, lean into the tank, and hold each gear as the RPM builds and the power surges. While the exhaust may look unconventional and sound slightly muted, the induction noise from the airbox adds a vital bark and character. Yamaha's CP3 motor is renowned for its blend of power, torque, sound, and character. An engine that excels in any road scenario. It's never overwhelming but always energetic, making it a joy to ride both on the street and the track. While the CP3, Powered MT, 09 and XSR900 are celebrated for their wheelie capabilities, the GP is less lively in this regard due to its longer wheelbase and forward weight distribution. Yamaha doesn't position the GP as a sport bike, yet it boasts higher-grade KYB suspension compared to the base XSR model. Both ends are fully adjustable, featuring high and low-speed compression damping. With the new weight distribution, the front end is slightly stiffer, and the rear is softer. The bike is equipped with the latest Bridgestone S23 tires, a single compound sport tire developed in partnership with Yamaha, mounted on lightweight aluminum spin-forged wheels. Thanks for watching.